Well, good morning. I, we were asked to say what Easter means to us. So the first, in order to get the big plan of Easter, you first have to know the, the crucifixion, the sacrifice, the redemption, the resurrection. Okay, the crucifixion in Matthew 17, 22 to 23. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed in the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. About the, and then on the sacrifice, uh, Matthew 27, 46, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabathun, okay. my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I think this was a bigger sacrifice almost than the physical, the fact that he had to be separated from his father. And the redemption in Matthew 20, 28, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And that was the reason he came to earth to begin with. And the resurrection, which is the, the, the crux of the Easter, in Matthew 27, 66. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting guard. They thought they would really uh, make sure that nobody would steal him. And uh, they didn't believe that he would be, uh, that he would rise the third day. And then Matthew 28, 6. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. In Mark 16, 6, Don't be alarmed, he said. This was to Mary Magdalene, the, the angel uh, was saying to her. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. And this is when he had victory over death. And that's why we can have victory over death. Death is defeated, and believers will live forever with God. What does the resurrection Easter mean to me? A couple, uh, a couple nights ago, Lois and I watched a four hour long movie on the Ten Commandments. And even though we, uh, we knew the story, there were still new things that came out that made me think about Easter and how God worked out salvation for his children in, in hard times. And when we think of the Bible, from beginning to end, it's a story of salvation. And God brings us out in so many different ways. He did it for the children of Israel. He, even in the Garden of Eden, he made a way through sacrifices for Adam and Eve and, and, and their descendants. And this goes all the way through the Bible. And then we come to the verse that is so key to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Him that believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And John ties this into later in, 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 uh, with the words of Jesus. After Jesus had risen and, 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 and uh, appeared to the disciples, Peace be unto you, as my Father sent me, even so send I you. All right, what's that mean? God sent him to this earth for a, to die for our sins. And we are supposed to spread that message. And um, it's through his word that we can understand this and through his spirit that we can understand this. And one thing, one blessing he gives to us when he was talking to Thomas about Thomas's unbelief, he told him, says, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. This is a blessing that he gives us. We haven't seen him, and, uh, but yet we know he is. And this is what resurrection means to me. We know that he is with us. Even now, when we can't be together like we're used to, uh, with God's help we can get through this and we, I just want to thank him for that and that's what it means to me